Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the woods behind the Knife Center. And today we're asking ourselves the question, does a competition style cleaver make a good camp knife? Let's find out. So this is the Condor Wood Buster. Now this is a Blade Sports legal knife. And what I mean by that is the dimensions and the weights and everything are within spec that you could actually take this out and run it through a competition course and have a very affordable knife to do it with. But a lot of us aren't actually out there doing that competition stuff. So I'm looking at this knife and thinking, I bet you I could do a lot of good camp stuff with this. With that in mind, let's go see what this can do. So of course the Wood Buster by its very nature is a hefty chopper. And we're gonna get to some more of that in detail in a little bit. Uh, but the first thing, and one of the things that any camp knife needs to be capable of doing, in my opinion, is to make a tent stake. So to do that, I'm going to take a little bit of this uh, fallen branch here and see how it does at that task. So I probably cut it off a little too short here, but that's okay. We can still get the basic idea. First, I'm going to trim it. So a few things come to mind immediately. First off, this is 1075 carbon steel, like most Condors are, but this is actually a convex grind, which is a first for a Condor production blade. The geometry of that convex grind is making it very easy for me to kind of shave the outer layers off of this stick, having no real problems with that at all. Another thing that I notice, most competition style cleavers don't have this clip out here on the uh, top point of the cleaver. But because they've done this, because Joe Flowers has designed it this way, I'm able to use the tip of this knife a little more effectively than a typical camp cleaver, or than a typical competition cleaver, I should say. For instance, I've got a small fork right here, and I'm able to get in right behind that pretty easily, using my thumb to push against the spine of the blade. It gives you some fine detail options that you might not get with an otherwise fully, fully shaped cleaver. So for the actual point of the tent stake, you wanna make it a little bit off center so you're not in the pithy center. And for that, I usually like to employ a chest lever grip. So let's do that. You hold the knife so that the edge is pointing towards your knuckles and then you can brace it on your chest, pull the stake there, and then you can pull with both arms and exert a lot of leverage on the stick. Using this method, you're able to get a lot more strength and get a lot deeper cuts than you usually would be if you're just using your muscles to carve with. The knife actually worked very well, felt very comfortable in that grip as well. You can see here that the scales are made out of canvas micarta and they're nice and thick. There's a lot of girth and a lot of meat to the grip. That's gonna make it easier to hold during long sessions of carving or chopping and overall just creates a very comfortable profile. One other thing you'll notice as I'm holding up this handle is that this is also a tapered tang knife. Again, another first for Condor and a pretty cool uh, addition from them. So next up, I could chop through this right here I'm gonna leave that fork in the stake um, right here. I could chop through this, but I'm actually gonna kind of beaver chew through it, just again, to test more of the fine carving capabilities of the Wood Buster. So you can do this a couple of different ways. You can execute these cuts either back here near the heel of the blade. When you're doing it like that, the blade itself is nicely balanced. So you have a, some weight out front and weight out back. You're not fighting that very much. But at the same time, using that thumb behind the tip, allows for some very precise control. Whereas this, you can still be precise, but you might get a little more power back here. So it's good to have those options. So once you're most of the way through, you can just snap it off and then we'll clean up the top. Once that's flattened out, we'll just notch the edge to help keep it from splitting as you hammer it into the ground. So that's a perfectly serviceable tent stake right there because we've got the fork and the branch coming off here. I don't really need to make a notch for my guy line because it's gonna be trapped right there. But if you wanna do that, it's the same type of thing as when we beaver chewed through the top. Just make a quick stop cut and then notch up into that until it's deep enough to run your guy line through. So overall, fine carving, at least fine carving enough to achieve a tent stake. The Wood Buster did just fine. It's not so heavy that it's too cumbersome. Let's see what it can do next. So one thing you'll notice um, that makes its way over from the blade sport style choppers to this wood buster is the use of two separate lanyard holes. You have one at the back and one at the front. And actually this allows for the use of a forward lanyard 
which I find to be far safer than most rear, rear mounted lanyards, and here's why. I've strung up this piece of paracord, it's a very simple way to do it, and it's sized to fit my wrist right now, but you simply slide your hand down through the lanyard, and then you can grip the knife like so. And what's great about this is if you do lose your grip and you actually even let go of the knife, it's not going anywhere. So I'm gonna throw this back into its leather sheath here. This is a Condor, so you get a nice high quality leather sheath, black in this case, some of their things are brown, but it's a very thick piece of leather, so you got a lot of strength there, and a nice swiveling belt loop if you wanna carry it on your belt. But I'm just gonna carry it around like this. Let's go find something to chop. So the first thing we're gonna do, we've got a, a green sapling here, two right next to each other, so we're gonna take one of them down. Let's see what this convex geometry can do against a smaller piece of green wood. No problem whatsoever, as you can see. Looks like we're maybe close to an inch diameter, cut across the diagonal for more efficiency, straight through, no problem. That's pretty cool, actually. <laughs> Man, look how deep that bit. Two quick hits, not bad right there. Might be coming in a little too shallow right now. It's gonna go. So we found this fallen branch here. It's not super hard, but it wasn't really green anymore either. Uh, chopped through that, no problem. I mean, we had some really good hits. The convex geometry of the wood buster just bit really deep. Even just the first two hits threw a big, uh, pretty good wedge out of there. To get to it, I had to do a little bit of light machete type of work. And if you're gonna be doing the type of work that requires you to use a machete for hours on end, get a machete. But in a camp situation, the wood buster is certainly gonna get you by in a pinch. It's gonna do most of what you need. And again, because it's not too, too heavy, it'll work all right. Well, so far the wood buster has been holding up extremely well against the chopping tests. And one of the last things you might wanna be doing with wood in a camp scenario is batoning. Now it could be in an emergency if everything around you is wet and you need to get a fire going, you can use your knife to split the, the wood, get to the dry wood in the middle. But even if you're not doing that, even if it's not an emergency, it's still just something that's fun to do around camp. Now the blade of this wood buster, I didn't mention it before, is almost 10 inches long and it's a quarter inch thick. So it should be able to split this stuff fairly efficiently. Let's find out. Whew. About to lose my baton. So it's working pretty well. This wood is actually a bit wetter than I thought it was, so it's presenting a bit more of a difficulty because of that denseness. But one of the cool things that uh, that little clip out near the point does, in addition to that fine carving stuff from before, it actually gives you a nice place to hit with your baton, especially if you're getting on something, using something that's a little bit larger or you don't have a whole lot of tip sticking out, it's a good place for your baton to hit and drive the force home. So my old batoning stick is just about busted through. So I'm gonna take this, the wood again is still a little bit wet, but I'm gonna strip it, shape it, let it dry out so I've got something for the next time around. You know, because of the height of this blade, there's a fair bit of mount you could actually grip onto. It might make a pretty good draw knife as well. Not bad at all. And because of that convex geometry, you can kind of angle it angle the edge using the shoulder of the bevel so that you get that edge biting in at the exact angle you want it to. too much. 
So as I'm forming the handle here, I'm kind of wanting to take a little mass out up here. And it's nice, I'm kind of able to use a little bit of the weight of the knife to chop in like that. And then it's real easy to just clear it out of the way. Anyway, you get the idea. So as a camp knife, I think the Wood Buster is a phenomenal tool. What I'm really most impressed about is the edge geometry. That convex all the way down works well for all kinds of different stuff. Whether you're doing some light machete work, a little bit of carving, heavier chopping or batoning, it does it all. And that makes sense because competition choppers have to do a wide range of tasks as well. Everything from chopping hanging rope to chopping through two by fours to the finer stuff like splitting a drinking straw in half. And your ge edge geometry has to be just right to pull it off. And Condor did a phenomenal job with this knife. I've used some of those competition choppers. They're usually a little bit thicker than the quarter inch of this wood buster, but that little bit thinner geometry here lets it slice even better with that awesome convex. When you're going out into the woods, I would always recommend carrying multiple tools with you. Something like a smaller fixed blade would go great with this wood buster, but if this is all you had with you, the wood buster could definitely get just about whatever you needed done. Whether you're splitting wood for the campfire, using it for smaller tasks like creating traps or snares, tent stakes, any of that sort of thing. It could even do a little bit of food prep in a pinch if you need it to. The Condor Wood Buster, fantastic one tool option for camping and survival. Thanks again to Condor and to Joe Flowers for getting us this knife out for review. Make sure to let us know what you think of it in the comments. And if you wanna get your hands on one of your own, you can click the link in the description to head over to knifecenter.com. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. See you next time. Mark? Hang on. Oh, son of a... I know, right? The Wood Buster could definitely get the... <laughs> Using that. <laughs> Carefully. So, hey, David, let me grab you guys some pizza while it's still here. Let me know what you guys want and I'll hold it. Ow. A few slices of not vegetable for Thomas.